Let's take you now to Armenia, where violence has unfolded over the past 48 hours, and specifically over the past few hours, as Azerbaijani troops and forces have now opened fire on refugees who've been uh, trying to flee uh, the, the area, of course, Artsakh, which has been held now and surrounded by Azerbaijani forces. What we're really concerned about, of course, is that a genocide could unfold inside that region, an ethnic cleansing of 80,000 Armenians who have been trapped there. That is the concern. And suddenly America is flying in, sending Susan Power in to prop up support for the for the government um, of Armenia and Pashinian. So a very- Susan Power, the architect of the Syrian attacks. Yeah, exactly. So she, when she's coming into town, you know shit's about to hit the fan. So Patrick Lancaster is in the heart of it all right now, watching as these refugees are trying to leave and being fired upon by these forces, and he filed this report just a short time ago. Hello, Redacted. I'm Patrick Lancaster, and right now we are in the center of Goris, Armenia. Now, Goris, Armenia is the biggest uh, uh, border city bordering Armenia and what's internationally recognized as Azerbaijan, but uh, was, is, however you want to call it, Republic of Artsakh, and now all the Armenian residents are being evacuated uh, because it seems the Republic of Artsakh will be no more, and uh, the Armenian residents have to flee for their lives. So right now we have a, the House of Culture here in the center, and it's being used as a makeshift uh, uh, first aid center, registration center, um, you know, just general help for the long term for the uh, uh, the refugees here. We see Red Cross on site. We see uh, Armenian police. Uh, here's a Red Cross member right here. Uh, Armenian police, Armenian military. Uh, there's a big effort here to help the refugees refugees as they come from uh, Nagorno-Karabakh, Republic of Artsakh, Azerbaijan, whatever you want to call it, here are the facts on the ground. We're talking to the people, seeing exactly what the situation is, what uh, happened uh, in Stepanakert, which is the capital of the uh, Republic of Artsakh, and unfortunately last night there was a huge uh, tragedy, and one of the few uh, fueling stations that was set up to give uh, a rationed amount of fuel to the refugees so they could escape and evacuate. Um, there was an explosion. It's not exactly 100% uh, clear what caused it, but the explosion is now uh, reported to have injured over 270 people, killed at least 20, and there are still people missing. So people expect the number of killed to uh, rise, of course, um, un 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 unfortunately. Right now, throughout the morning and day, there has been uh, helicopters flying back and forth across uh, uh, the city of uh, Goris, and we hope those are medevac helicopters bringing in people uh, from the uh, tragedy in Stepanakert uh, to a hospital to hopefully save their lives, because it said there's a lack of uh, support in Stepanakert to help these people, of course, because there's been a blockade for so many months, there's a lack of medicine and a lack of fuel, a lack of food uh, for these people because Azerbaijan blockaded uh, uh, Artsakh for so long before they invaded last week. Um, so this is the situation on the ground. We're going to be uh, continuing to show you what we can. Now, let's take a look at the horrible explosion, uh, just uh, the video that was taken just after this explosion last night in Stepanakert. <laughs> All right, so one thing that should be noticed, this flag right here is the uh, Republic of Artsakh flag. They seem to put it up just for these refugees uh, here. Uh, the flag over the administration building is the Armenian flag, of course, but this is the Republic of Artsakh flag. <laughs> Okay.
All right, so you see another uh, helicopter right above me here. I uh, just wanted to make a point to show you that these uh, helicopters are just keep uh, coming, coming. So it seems like there's active evacuations uh, by uh, medevac going on from Stepanakert to here, evacuating the victims of the tragedy last night when the uh, gas station exploded. Um, so we're going to bring you all the information we can. Keep bringing you updates. We're going to bring you a film and bring you everything here on the ground. Uh, can you tell us what's happening here right now? So right now we have refugees coming in from Artsakh as we know they've been in a blockade for 10 months now. Um, just a couple days ago, I think it's the fourth day now, um, the third day actually, they've um, been allowed out of Artsakh, so they've been coming in buses and buses. Um, the first day was about a thousand people and then every day there's a bit more and more. So um, what, what we have here now is the community centre where they're coming straight off the bus. To, uh, we're in Gordis now, which is the second um, town after we, you pass the border into Armenia. And so the people are coming off the buses straight here and they are just giving their names, letting them know who they are um, so they know who's left and who's here. And after that, we have set up a tent over here where we are providing them with basic essentials. There's food, they can have a hot meal, they can have a cold meal, and there's also clothes on the way. It's coming if, if they've left anything behind that they don't have on them right now. Um, we have that ready for them as well. And uh, yeah, that's what's happening here at the moment. And yeah. Okay, and where is the financing coming for uh, uh, coming so from all this? So there's a lot of us. So I'm from Australia myself. Um, there's a, in our team. There's people from Armenia. There's people from America and Canada. So what we're doing is messaging our family, messaging our friends. What we're doing is um, collecting funds from there, showing them the situation here with videos and photos and live updates and. Um, live on Facebook and um, showing them the situation. A lot of them are already aware, the, a lot of the Armenians in the diaspora are, are already aware, but then they are also spreading the news to non-Armenians and the non-Armenians are, are willing to donate, willing to help. We are also putting our own funds in as well if we need to. Um, and yeah, that's that's how the funds are coming for this, yeah. Okay, and if somebody wants to donate, uh, how and where can they do so it? So we are under the orga organization of All for Armenia, seen on my shirt over here. They've been um, operating since the 2020 um, Artsakh War. Uh, so they have a donation link via their website. Uh, but also because we have diasporians here, so, um, it's uh, a little bit quicker if um, we have an Australian bank account, someone sends it from Australia to an Australian bank account, we have um, direct access and quick access to the funds. Same with an American bank account to another American bank account. Otherwise, uh, internationally, uh, wherever they're from, they can donate via the All for Armenia website. Okay. And all their updates are also posted on there as well. Okay, yeah. great. And can I ask you, um, what, in your words, has been happening over the last week in Artsakh? So, as an Armenian, it's very emotional, very hard. We have family and friends in Artsakh, and it's uh, it's hard to put it into words. Really, it's uh, one that's half of me is uh, glad that they're safe, finally somewhere safe, somewhere they can get food, somewhere where they're not deprived of something. But it's also very sad they've had to leave somewhere that they've lived their whole life, set up their whole life, and have to come and restart from, if not scratch, then almost scratch. What? Uh, do you believe would have happened if the Armenians, uh, uh, the ones that are, have already left and the ones that are there, if they do not leave when Azerbaijan controls Artsakh, what yeah, would happen? I don't even want to think about that. They've spoken about integration and stuff, and, and, and uh, we've seen the brutality from Azerbaijan. It is, they are cruel, they are violent. I don't even want to think about what they would do if some Armenians stay behind. So we just... Personally, everyone has a different opinion, but personally, I want our Armenians safe with us over here. We'll provide them with what they need and help as much as we can. But if they, I understand if they do want to stay, but I just don't even want to think about that situation. I understand. And about the tragedy last night at the fuel station. That was, that was, yeah, that's very upsetting. Very upsetting. We were up all night, couldn't get some sleep. Just our minds were there, trying to get in contact with people that we know, trying to get in contact with. Yeah, people that know who was there or whatnot, that was very sad. Um, it's also very suspicious, in my opinion, again, very suspicious. Um, that, that fuel, from what we know, that gas was sent from Azerbaijan themselves. If that was planned, if that wasn't planned, I can't speak on that. We don't know that information yet, but it is very suspicious. They're trying to get out of there, they're trying to catch a break, and something like that happens. It's, it's, it's not something someone would do on purpose. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, not, it's not something that like an Armenian would do on purpose. Let uh -huh. that, yeah. Understand. And um, can you just briefly introduce yourself, who you are and what My you do? My name is Saro, Saro Tahanyan. Um, I am born in Australia. Um, 
I'm obviously Armenian. Uh, I speak Armenian at home with my uh, parents. I went to an Armenian school in Australia. There's one big one in Sydney, um, which is where I'm based. Um, but I've been coming back to Armenia every year, almost every year, since 2011. Well, I came back. I came here for the first time in 2011. I fell in love. I met my cousins. I met my family here, and I've been back every year since. It's just the place that I want to be. It's where my heart is, and uh, a whole. Uh, a whole lot of me is, is, is uh, my personality is based around being Armenian. All right. Well, thank you very much. No problem. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Patrick, for that report from Armenia. Um, by the way, a bunch of people are asking in here in the chat room, what was the name of the website that the young man just uh, mentioned? And we, we just put it, we pinned it on YouTube. I don't, Rumble does not allow you to pin it, but the website is all for Armenia.org. So if you've got relatives uh, who are Armenian or you want to support this, uh, absolutely. But anyway, that was the, that was the website that that young man recommended as a place for donation. So all for Armenia.org. And we just pinned it on our YouTube chat. Um, I don't think we can do that on Rumble, but people were asking, and so that's the name of the website. So you can go there and learn more about it. Just to, I did post it in, on Rumble, but yeah, I don't. You can't pin. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Good to know. Um, yeah, just tragic. And of course, when he was asked what what do you think could happen to those eighty thousand or so that are trapped there, he's like, I don't even want to think about that. Uh, and that's what the big concern is, of course. Uh, uh, you know, another ethnic cleansing. Um, and we hope that that's not what's going to happen. So uh, we'll keep our eye on what's happening there. It's a very, very important story. And uh, yeah, we'll, keep, we'll watch it closely. Thank you so much for watching this segment here at Redacted. We are live every day at 4 p.m. Eastern time trying to share the stories that the mainstream media will not cover. You should also come over and join our community of Redacted Rebels over at Redacted.inc. That's our private locals community where we can share exclusive content that we simply cannot share here on YouTube. Come over and join the rebellion together right now by going to Redacted.inc. We'll see you next time.